Um, my name is Sheila Jackson. I work on the TAFS program. Um, I am part of the core group, um, one of the consortium members, and I am the senior knowledge management specialist. Twice a year, TAFS puts together two large learning events, one in DC and then one in um, someplace internationally. And each time, basically, what we're really trying to do is help Food for Peace and the PVO community kind of bridge that gap to learn from each other, give each other a venue to be able to talk about things, share information, exchange. I benefit a lot from these type of knowledge sharing events, mainly because I learn different partners' approaches to programming. Um, it makes me think outside the box, and it makes me consider my organization's approaches to responding to household food insecurity or child malnutrition or maternal malnutrition. I feel like I gain access to new tools and resources and it provides an opportunity to talk with partners, maybe new partners, about partnership opportunities, about different ways that we can complement each other's or each organization's strengths to meet the end result. Clearly one organization is not going to be able to actually resolve the food insecurity issues that we face. Uh, there has to be a lot more collaboration and interaction between organizations. Um, um, and that's not just developing organizations and partners, but also donors and policymakers as well. So within USAID, these have become um, more and more important as the realization has become that to, in order to strengthen our projects to have greater impact, what needs to happen is actually to have this idea flow between individuals and really to strengthen um, the face-to-face -face portion. One of the things that we realized is there was kind of this gap between what um, USAID, some of their expectations were for some of their work product versus what PVOs thought that they should produce. And so one of the things um, that we really try to do is make this into skills building um, and give people a chance to learn and do their jobs better. That's what I really wanted more than anything out of this for people when they leave here after taking the theory of change um, concurrent session, they can go back and say, I know how to do this now. I can immediately apply it. There's a strong connection between agriculture and nutrition. We're not really totally sure what it is, but we've begun to work in the area of bringing those two approaches together, agriculture and then enhancement of nutrition, and figure out ways to work with those things. Um, and one of the critical elements involved is empowerment of women and building gender equality uh, so that men and women work together. I also learned about gender issues and uh, it changed my understanding of, of uh, gender and I got to meet uh, new people. And the, one, the, two, the other two that I've attended in uh, DC here, I have learned a lot about uh, promising practices based on what they have um, extracted from the evaluations of projects, what others are doing that, that uh, could be implemented in the countries where I work. Certainly an event like this is an opportunity to combine what people are learning in different spheres and put it together because no one's going to get the answer on their own. So, you know, one example of that I think is this, this learning around resilience and, and research around resilience that Mercy Corps has been working extensively on IFPRI, USAID, other, other agencies. I think there's a lot more thought about stunting and really what are some of the causes of uh, chronic malnutrition. One of the things we've talked about at, at this workshop is uh, that we're learning so much about, for example, the impact of water, environmental enteropathy on, uh, on the health of children, as well as nutritional choices, health care, stimulation of children. I feel like there's a lot of intellectual energy behind understanding the, the causes of stunting and how we can, we can uh, tackle them as a community. We particularly appreciated the opportunity for our Francophone colleagues to have a French-focused uh, meeting in Burkina Faso, but uh, we bring colleagues together from around the world and we find that it's been important to develop communities of practice across uh, the different organizations, the many, the academic institutions, 
different donor groups and lots and lots of different NGOs. So events like this, uh, uh, to me, integrate and complement the ICT uh, you know, underpinning structure that we still need with this more kind of relational social aspect of knowledge sharing and I would say appropriation of some of the know-how that we have. And what I find very interesting about that is that at CRS we are also trying to implement, to complement, if you will, the, the work that our, that our ICT for the department, which is very much advanced in this, our IT, which, uh, which we have, has been working for years on this, uh, with now this more uh, relational, more social aspects of learning and, and the use of knowledge management techniques to do that. What's been great about this particular meeting that uh, the TOPS has been holding is that we have had both uh, the implementing uh, agencies and USAID here together. Now USAID is in the process of coming up with new strategies around nutrition and uh, for Food for Peace and they are actively requesting input from the implementing agencies on what do we think is really going to help achieve the reduction of food insecurity and it's great to have a con uh, the chance to have a conversation about that and, and to be full partners on that. So I think that is that has been one of the the best uh, accomplishments of, the, of this meeting and this process. I also see um, this as an opportunity of having more direct interactions with USAID, um, getting the latest in terms of their strategic ways uh, that they're, they're considering how to deal with development. I think that's extremely important. And finally, I would say quite honestly, is the networking, just getting to know each other. And, um, you know, so we're collecting, you know, uh, contact information. And uh, it's, it's you know, very important in terms of uh, how we stay together and actually work together. Everywhere from you know, larger events like the Feed the Future Global Forum um, to our partner here with TOPS, the Food Security and Nutrition Network, um, we're all looking to um, improve idea flow between uh, individual partners to increase creativity, productivity and impact. It seems to be a great convergence of a number of different parties, a number of different actors. We've had from congressmen to uh, high representatives of, of USAID here, uh, diff several different NGOs, academic institutions, people from multiple different sectors and uh, levels within their organizations come together to share. Uh, it is quite fascinating and, and, and very exciting. I actually wish we had these much more often. The first day of the meeting was July 10th, Food for Peace's 60th anniversary. So the fact that we've got to have a little celebration for them and really kind of, I thought that really was a nice start to bring us all together, why we really are here, the donor community with the PVO community, the implementers, all of us working together really to make sure the world is a food secure place. We are identifying new questions that need to be addressed and we can bring them forward to TOPS and have them take on new issues for us. I know when TOPS began, they didn't have a focus on uh, how do we work together, how do we manage our work together in a consortium. There are now lots of discussions about consortia. I find it quite interesting too, there, there are new actors here that I haven't seen in the past and uh, I hope that will continue to grow and expand as, as we move this forward. Personally, I'm just in, extremely inspired to be here. I mean, we are writing proposals, we're doing our own research, we're focused on, you know, someone might be focused on how to improve soil fertility, another person might have been focused in the last six months on how to improve the food insecurity in, in Syria or, you know, working on this specific DFAT program in this country, so when we get together you know, sparks fly and connections are made with, with regards to how these different approaches link up. So, you know, just in a personal way, I'd say, you know, it makes me want to do this more and, and more and more.